Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We come before you tonight, Lord, King of kings, Lord of lords, to surrender ourselves to you. We welcome you to Saturday night worship on this evening. Hallelujah. We are just grateful to have this opportunity to come into the house of God to worship, to be refilled, to be restored. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank those that have joined us on our streaming platform. We thank God for you as well. I'm just going to open us up in prayer and scripture. I was, I was reminded of Psalms 27. Glory to God, where it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Glory to God. The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, my God, they stumbled and they failed. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. Only one thing, Lord, only one thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may obtain the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Come on, somebody, for in a time of trouble, he shall hide me in his tabernacle, in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall place me, my goodness, and set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me and answer me. Glory to God, for when thou said it, seek my face. My heart said unto thee, Lord, thy face will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Leave me not, Lord, neither forsake me. O God of my salvation, but when my mother and when my father forsake me, the Lord will lift me up. The Lord will lift you up. Teach me thy ways, O Lord. Lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Do not overcome me, Lord, unto the will of my enemies. For false witnesses have risen up against me, and they breathe out cruelty. Oh, but watch this. I had fainted. I had fainted, but don't you faint unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. David said, wait and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Father, as we come before you, I pray that you give us the strength to wait, O oh God. I pray that you give us the strength, O oh God, to seek your face, O oh Lord. I pray that you give us the strength to see you, O oh Jacob, to seek thy face, O oh God. O oh Lord, because we need you in this day and in this hour, Lord. We need you in this moment, in this time, O oh God. Our hearts cry for you, O oh God. Our hearts thirst for you, O oh Lord. As the deer panted after the water brook, our soul longs for you, O oh God. Lord, we need you to do something for us, oh God. We need you to pour your spirit down on us, oh God. We need you to refresh us and revive us, oh God. We need you to restore us, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord. And right now I pray, oh God, for those that are under the sound of my voice, oh Lord. For those that are in your house of worship, oh God. For those that have joined us remotely, oh God. God, that you would send your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Let it permeate the atmosphere, oh God. In the name of Jesus, as we set our hearts for you, oh God, we pray that it would burn after you, oh God, and that you would send fire to the altar, oh God, that you would consume everything that's not like you, oh God. Oh God, that sin would not glory in your presence, oh God, but God, that you would turn our hearts unto you, oh God. Lord, that we would seek your place in righteousness, oh God. Oh God, that you would heal our hearts, oh God, that you would cleanse the land, Oh God, oh God, we know that if we need you, oh God, we know that it is by your blood and by the sacrifice of Jesus, oh Lord, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, that we can obtain mercy, oh Lord, that we can find grace to help us, oh Lord, in every hour of need, oh God, in the need of our mind, oh God, in the need of our finances, Lord, in the need of deliverance, Lord, move by your mighty hand, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We know your arm is not too short, that you cannot reach.
reach us where we are. We know, oh God, that we are not too downtrodden, that you cannot reach into the depths of despair and lift us up, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We call on Jesus because we know there's power in the name. We know that there's power in the name. Yokes are broken in the name of Jesus. I dare you to call on the name of Jesus. I dare you to call on them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we go into worship, Lord, we pray, oh God, that you would have your way, oh God, like never before, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Do a mighty thing in our presence. Do a mighty thing in our midst. In the name of Jesus, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise, oh God. Glory to God. Stir up our heavenly language, God. Stir up our heavenly gifts, oh God. In the name of Jesus, let the prophetic voice of the Lord speak through song, oh God. Speak through the word, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. That's it. I dare you to lift up your hands. Lift up your voice. Begin to reach out because God is moving. Even those that are online, right where you are. You may be driving in your car. You may be at home in your bathroom. But God is getting ready to visit you. There's a mighty move of God that is on his way to where you are. To meet you in your situation. To meet your need. Glory to God. We worship you, King of kings and Lord of Lords. We invite you in the place today. We invite you, Lord. None like you nowhere. None like you nowhere. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to the King of Kings. Glory to the Lord of Lords. I want you to prepare your heart. I want you to prepare your mind. I want you to prepare your spirit to begin to go into worship as we begin to sing praises to the Lord. Let's go into worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You said your glory 
your name Jesus yes. hallelujah one day hallelujah every knee will bow Amen. and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord hallelujah oh, yes. hallelujah Jesus is Lord hallelujah 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 glory to your Lord to you, Lord. Oh, glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. God, we bow our hearts before you. We worship and adore you, Jesus.
just want to be with you. open up your mouth and just right where you stand create an altar see Lord feel this place feel I am your tabernacle I am your dwelling place I am your resting place take your rightful place in me fill me up till I overflow with your goodness till I overflow with you God I want to look like you I want to be like you I just want to be with you God hallelujah come on open up your mouth and give him glory tonight Jesus, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us become more aware of your presence and of your glory. You are with us. You dwell in us in these jars of clay. You dwell within us. We say, what is man that you are mindful of us? Or the son of man that you visited us? You have made us a little lower than the angels. But God, we thank you so much that you have crowned us with glory and with honor. God, we bless your name. We exalt your name for dwelling in us. Hallelujah. Take your rightful place in us. Be seated upon the throne of our hearts, God. So take your rightful place in us, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Come on, say, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory. Let us become, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Now, Jesus, we just thank you right now for your presence. We thank you that you are in this place. Holy Spirit, we say have your way. And as I preach your word, I pray, Father, for preaching power. I pray that you will release such a fresh anointing where lives are changed, God. Let there be something that is said, God, that is uh, liberating, that is life-changing, that is life-altering. Father, we thank you right now for the power of the Holy Spirit working in every believer's heart. We give your name glory. We give your name honor and praise. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Let every heart shout amen. Amen. Why don't you hug a person around you and just say, let us become more aware of his presence. We want to become more aware of his presence. We want to become more more aware of his goodness and of his mercy. Glory. Glory to God. It's good to see you out here tonight. We say welcome to everyone who's joining us online. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us on a Saturday night. We are here every first and third Saturday of every month at the Word Worship Center. We ask that you do share and like uh, our posts. We want to get the Word of God out to as many people as possible. We believe that what we have here is equipping for the church. It is equipping for people. It is inspiring and helps people to connect with the Lord Jesus Christ in a new and fresh way. So we want to, again, uh, get the word out to as many people as possible. So it will, uh, we will be greatly appreciated if you will uh, like and share our posts. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to dive into the word of the Lord tonight. But before we do, can we get a good, give a good God bless you to our worship team, our worship ministry who has done such an excellent job in leading us and our musicians. Glory to God. We don't take it for granted that we have 
capable and anointed and integral worship leaders, worship singers and, and musicians. Uh, not every church has that, <laughs> trust me. You can just scroll down on uh, social media sometimes and you can see not every church has that. And so we are blessed here to have such uh, anointed and skillful uh, psalmists and minstrels. Amen. Glory to God. So tonight's subject is true success. Somebody say true success. I want to talk about true success. We possibly rebrand what we think success is in life. Uh, if you have your Bibles, just turn to Joshua 1. Joshua 1. Joshua 1, we're going to look at the 8th verse. Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1.8. We're going to read from the New Living Translation. And it says here, uh, study this book. This is God talking to Joshua. He says, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you Again, tonight's subject is true success. Uh, how many people here want to be successful? Yeah, I, everybody's raised their hands. Uh, how do you define success? As a matter of fact, if you're taking notes or if you have your phone, just, just write down real quickly, how do you define, as an individual, how do you define success? How do you know when you're winning? How do you know when you're successful? What's, what's the definition for you? Just quickly write that down. If you're watching online, do that real quickly. Just, I define success when this happens, when I achieve this. Just write it down. Real quick, real quick, real quick. About 15 more seconds. How do you define success? How do you know you're winning in life? Now, if you're frustrated or discontent with life, that may be caused by this feeling of not having achieved the ideal uh, that you just had in your mind uh, concerning success. So let me ask you, if you're frustrated or you're discontent within life, because some people are there, they're in that space, and, it, and it's most likely because they haven't achieved this ideal that they have of success. What are you chasing? What are you spending your emotional and financial and physical efforts chasing after? To where you feel like if I obtain this, I'll be successful. And therefore, I'll be happy. See, we all have various definitions for success. And some people's personal definition of success involves having a high net worth. How many say, I, I, I just want to have a lot of money? <laughs> How many say, I just want financial freedom? You know, I want to be a millionaire. That's what I know that I've had success. Some people uh, wrote down having a thriving career. You want to be the, the top dog at your company, and then, then you would have success, or you would classify yourself as being successful. Uh, somebody may have written down, I, I want to be married and, and build a, a strong family legacy. You know, that's success for you. Or academic achievement. You know, you want to obtain your doctorate or your master's degrees. That, that's success for you. Maybe a big home, fancy cars, or maybe a closet full of clothes. That's what is classified as success for you. Maybe operating in certain networks of power. You want to be close to the powerful people. So that you can have influence as well. Maybe that's success for you. Or some people probably wrote down just freedom to do what I want to do and when I want to do it. <laughs> Somebody said, that's success for me. I just want to, I don't want to answer to nobody. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And most of our ideas around success have come from societal standards. And most of our, of our ideas around success have to do with what we think would make us happy. Not necessarily what will make us happy. It's what we think will make us happy. It's what society, in some regards, have dictated to us and, and, and has uh, allured us with. And some of us have bitten, into, uh, have bitten the bait 
of trying to achieve what society dictates to us as being successful. As a matter of fact, there, there's an entire uh, marketing strategy that focuses on selling you and I images of success with the underlying assumption that this product, that if you, if you buy this product, it will provide you the life that we just showed you. Look at, look at the Jordan brand. Everybody in the 80s, we bought them Jordans. Now, when we first saw them, you knew we thought they were ugly when we first saw them. But, but they sold us on the idea that if you wear these shoes, you're going you gonna to ball like Mike. You're going to be like Mike. And then they, they continue the whole marketing brand, like Mike. If I can be like Mike, I want to be, I want to be like Mike. <laughs> Thank you for harmonizing with me. It was this whole concept that if you buy these shoes and you, and you stick out your tongue, if you, if you jump high enough, you're going to dunk just like Mike, right? That's the idea. That's why some kids want to be rappers because they're seeing this idea, an ideal of success. This success it's success when I got a grill. It's success when, when I have lots of money and chains. It's success when I have cars and women and all this stuff. It's successful. Makes me feel good. So a lot of kids want to be like that. Or ratchet like some of these other artists that we won't talk about here in church. <laughs> but y'all know who I'm talking about. Uh, um, and also athletes. You know, we, we, we see athletes and we see how they live and we see how, what they do and the fame and the power. And some, some young people want to be like the athletes. It's unfortunate that uh, when you ask the majority of young people today, of youth, uh, you ask them what they want to be, and it's like, I, I want to play basketball, unfortunately. It's like, well, you don't want to you know, become a stockbroker or so, something else. It's because they don't see the success behind it. You don't want to be in, in, in IT or something? No, 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 I want to I ball. I want to rap, you know, because all they see are these images of what the world uh, d uh, dictates to them is success. And some of us have been influenced by the world as well. We have bought into this idea of chasing after the American dream, chasing after success. And then we get frustrated, in some regards depressed and discouraged when we don't measure up to this standard that the world, our society has curated to be for us as success. Now, we are of the kingdom of God. Let me see your hands if you're of the kingdom of God. Okay, everybody here saved, right? You, you, you love God, you're, you're in the kingdom, right? Why don't you ask somebody around you, are you in the kingdom of God? Are you, is, that, is, is he talking about you? Are you in the kingdom? <laughs> well, if you're in the kingdom, I'm talking to you. Many Christ followers, especially in our Western society, are chasing something that we were never meant to chase. Some of us have allowed these societal standards to be imposed upon us, and, and we allow these standards to trump God's standard for success for our lives. Amen? Glory to God. So, so I want us to see something that our priorities, if we examine them, are out of order. And sometimes we're pursuing material wealth, we're pursuing pleasure, we're pursuing status, we're pers per pursuing affirmation, and I'll say this, more than Yahweh. Now, notice I said more than Yahweh. I didn't say don't pursue those things. I didn't say don't uh, pursue or, or go after um, uh, material wealth. Yeah, we all work because we want wealth. We all invest because we want work, wealth, right? That, that, that's fine. That's, that's, that's okay. We, we want pleasure. Actually, pleasure is from God. He, he created pleasure. That, yes, so, so yes, we can have pleasure. Uh, status, yes. He wants us to have status. Other than, uh, otherwise, he would not have seated us in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Status equals influence. He wants us to have influence. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with us having status or being people of influence uh, or affirmation. We all have the need 
for affirmation. It's just when we allow all of these things, the things I just listed, it's when we pursue all of these things more than we pursue God, that's when it becomes an idol in our lives. That's when we are out of balance. We're trying to achieve this ideal of success outside of God. And God does not define success that way. And the main goal of this message is for those of us who are in the kingdom of God to be aware that there is a higher standard for success. Somebody say higher standard. Come on. There is a higher, st a higher standard for success. It is a standard that has been defined by God with rewards that are long lasting. I call it true success. And I call it true success because it's success that does not fade. So you can get the money and you can lose it the next day. <laughs> you, you, can, you can get the status and, and somebody tweet about you and, and then you be canceled <laughs> and you lose your status. That could, that could happen overnight. But the true success, what I'm talking about, does not fade. What I'm talking about has uh, eternal ramifications. And it's the kind of success that will, ha that will have you uh, having and receiving Yahweh's blessing. Somebody say true success. Now, there's three passages, passages of Scripture that I want to highlight that will provide us with God's perspective on success. Are you ready? We're going to go through these three Scriptures, and I'll be done. I just want to encourage you tonight. Turn to Matthew 7. Matthew 7, we're going to look at verses 21 through 23. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. We're going to read from the New Living Translation. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. When you have it, say amen. All right, you got it on the screen, so amen. <laughs> Here we go. This is Jesus speaking. He says, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, only those, here's the key, only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. And we, we, we perform many miracles in your name. People got out of wheelchairs. People that were deaf, they, they, they heard. We had miracle crusades. We did all of this stuff for you. And Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. Now, there's a nugget in here. Jesus is clearly telling us that when we stand before him, uh, check this out, he's not going to ask us about our stock portfolio. He's not going to ask us about our social media following or, or where we went to church. Or where we worked at. He's not going to ask us about our education or our business ventures or if we love Louis Vuitton or if we love Prada. He's not going to ask us about any of those things. And, and just for the super deep people, he's not going to ask us, oh, did you prophesy? Did your prophecies come to pass? Or, or your worship songs? He's not going to ask us about uh, uh, did we sing the right notes or did we curate the right songs for worship? He's not going to ask about our, how big our ministry was. What, did you have a mega church? That's not what Jesus is going to ask us about. That's not what he's going to bring up. What he's going to, to, to look at, when he reads the books, he's going to see, did we do the will of the Father? None of this other stuff matters. Jesus is literally giving us the key to true success. True success, and if you're taking notes, write this down, true success is doing the will of the Father. True success, authentic success, long-lasting success, fulfilling success. It's doing the will of the Father. Now, now, the will of the Father means that we are living according to his standards and his principles. That's why we started off with reading Joshua, the first chapter. Let's turn back there. Let's take, take a look at that. Let's take a look at what God told Joshua again. He, he said, study this book of instruction continually. See, for Joshua, it was the, the law. He received the law of Moses. For us, it, it'll be the, the word of God, the, the, the Bible, the scripture, the inspired word of God. We are to study the word continually, meditate on it day and night, so that we will be sure to obey 
so that we will be sure to obey, so that we will be sure to obey. I didn't know. I didn't know what you, well, meditate in the word so that you are sure to obey what the Lord is commanding us to do. And when we live according to his word, when we align our lives, our hearts, according to his word, it is then that we are living in the will of God. And also, so it's, it's written in his word, but also what God would do, and he, he showed me this this week, he will also show you his plan for your life. There's some assignments that you have to do. You're in the, in the earth for a reason right now. God released you. The miracle that you are released you in the earth for such a time as this so that you can accomplish something for the kingdom. So we we live according to his standards, his principles, his word, but we also walk in obedience to what he is communicating to us, his purpose and plan for our lives. There's some things he's, uh, he wants you to do, and it is his will that you do them. And he wants you to walk according to his plan for your life. Not chase the money. Not chase the women. Not chase the big houses. Not not chase prestige and power and affirmation. Not become a professional student because you're trying to to gain wealth and you're trying to gain uh, um, or, or, or add value to yourself. Go to school, yeah. But at some point in time, what you learn in school is going to have to work for you. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're just getting deeper and deeper and deeper into debt, and it's, it's just not working out for you. You need to do what God is telling you to do, and therein lies the wealth, and therein lies the power, and therein lies the anointing and the grace for you to accomplish, and it's fulfilling when you are living according to the will of God in true success. See, when you honor God, he will bestow honor upon you. You, y'all don't believe me? You, let, let's let's go to go to Daniel. We don't have to turn there, but if you if you think about Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, we just covered uh, that. In the, I think it was uh, the week before last. Daniel and the three Hebrew boys were were exiled in the land of Babylonia. They were taken in as slaves, if you will. Nebuchadnezzar told them. Basically, y'all need to bow. (laughs) Nebuchadnezzar told them, you need to bow to this golden statue. And what what happened? The three Hebrew boys were like, "Mm -mm. we ain't going to do that. We're going to honor God. And let it be known that even if he doesn't deliver us, it ain't because he can't do it. It ain't because he can't do it. But if he doesn't, just, just let this be known. We ain't serving your God. We're going to serve and honor our king. So Nebuchadnezzar threw them in a fiery furnace, right? And, and what happened? What happened? What happened? Nebuchadnezzar looked in the fire. And what he, he, he said, hold on. Did we throw in how many people? It was three, right? Did we throw in trace? <laughs> Why is he quattro in there? See, see, God came through for them. And they came out of the fire without even the smell of smoke. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it was then that God, uh, that Nebuchadnezzar rather, saw the miracle of God and was like, hey, y'all, the whole nation, we need to worship their God. Because that's the true and living God. And that was the second time that he said that. Because the first time was when, when Daniel, in the, in the first chapter of Daniel, when he interpreted the dream. When he interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream. What happened was Nebuchadnezzar was going to kill all of the, of the uh, fortune tellers and the, the prophets. and uh, He was going to kill all of them because nobody could tell, them, tell him what he dreamt and could uh, interpret the dream for him. So he was like, all oh, y'all going to die. Thank you, Lord. All oh, y'all going to die. All <laughs> oh, y'all going to die, right? <laughs> Amen. So, so, so God, uh, Daniel prayed. And he, got, he, he told uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, hey, y'all, y'all pray with me. Agree with me in prayer that God will give me the answer. And that very night, God gave Daniel the answer. And uh, Daniel went before Nebuchadnezzar, told him and interpreted the dream to him. 
And then what happens? Nebuchadnezzar promotes Daniel and his friends in the Babylonian system. So now you got Daniel, who was supposed to be a slave, a servant of Babylon, now is reigning as one of the leaders in Babylon. Because they didn't compromise, because they served the Lord, because they prayed unto God, God elevated them even in a system that wasn't designed for them. If he did it for them, how much more will he do it for us? When you bestow honor upon God, when you live according to his principles and his standards, guess what? He'll give you the wealth. When you live according to his principles and standards, when you are obedient, God will make you ball. You'll be balling for Jesus because he can trust you with the wealth. He can trust you with the relationships. He can trust you with the power. But many of us are pursuing these things that we're not called to pursue. And it's killing us inside because we feel like we don't measure up. And God's like, I, ain't, I don't even want you chasing that. Chase me, chase my will, follow after my plan, and I will lead you into a bountiful place. Somebody say true success. Turn to Matthew 6.33. I'm going to end right here. Matthew 6.33. It says this, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. I'm going to say that again. I said I'm going to sing it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. <laughs> seek ye first them, or seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. Listen, and what, what, what's going to happen? He will give you everything you need. Success in the kingdom is a matter of priority. He said, seek the kingdom of God, God's rule within you. Seek. God's rule within you. Seek his rule. I, God, I want you to rule my heart. I want you to dominate my heart. I want you to, to take right, the, your rightful place in my heart. I want you to be the priority in my heart. Actually, it's above our, all else. Guard your heart for it is out of the abundance of your heart. Your mouth speaks. You know, your heart affects everything you do. So if God is ruling over your heart, he's ruling over all of your actions. He's ruling over what you do. So you will have good success if you just allow God to rule in your heart. <laughs> he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and live according to his standards. And he's encouraging us to allow God to rule in our hearts and allow obedience to be the priority in our lives. And, and I want to ask you a question tonight. What have you given priority in your life? Because if, if you prioritize the kingdom, what does he say? He's going to give you everything you need. So we don't believe that. That's why we don't seek. We don't believe he's going to give us everything we need. So we pursue the money. We got 14 jobs. Wearing ourselves out. Trying to preserve ourselves instead of trusting God. Continually. Operating in faith. And asking God for answers. Is this blessing someone tonight? True success is obeying God. That's true success. And that carries us throughout eternity. <laughs> it's not fleeting. It, it, does, it, it lasts. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what God does through you, it lasts. It has eternal ramifications. So I want you to understand tonight that God wants us to have not only success, but good success. Evident success, mighty success, and not just by the world's standards, but by this higher standard, which is doing the will of God. And therefore, we will inherit the kingdom of heaven. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and then get to this judgment day? And, and Jesus says, hey, buddy, I don't even know who you, what's your name again? Depart from me. I never knew you. You never walked with me. You didn't live according to my will. You didn't do the will of the Father for your life. You didn't do the will of God. You, you didn't operate according to my standards and my principles. 
So tonight, I want to encourage everyone to make a decision to choose true success. And sometimes true success is going to look like you're losing at first. <laughs> yeah, so, sometimes it's going to look like you're losing at first. But you stay the course. You stay obedient. Think of the Hebrew boys. Like, they're standing for God. <laughs> they're like, look, we're going to serve God. And, 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 and if, he, uh, if he don't come through for us, man, then so be it. And I bet you they were like, Lord, please, Jesus, please come through for us, Yahweh. Please. And they were thrown into the fiery furnace. It didn't, it didn't work out well for them at first. They were in the fire. They went through the test. The weapon formed. But tell somebody it didn't prosper. Come on. It didn't prosper because they honored God. God gave them true success. A success they could not get on their own. And even then, they were elevated to a whole nother level than they were before. So choose true success. Examine your heart tonight. Just lift your hands right now. Just begin to think deeply of the adjustments that you might need to make in your life. What have you given priority? Have you given an ideal priority over the kingdom, over what God wants for your life? Have you allowed the world to dictate to you what your standard of success should be? And if so, why don't you choose tonight to have this adjustment, to have this shift in your heart. And say, I'm going to pursue you, God. I'm going to be obedient. I'm, I'm going to do what you want me to do. I'm not going to pursue anybody else's type of life because I see it. And they, they obviously have success. So I'm going to do that. No, 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 no. God, what do you have for me to do? I want to do that. Lord, I pray tonight that you will show us your will for our lives. We know it's in your written word, but we also know there's specific things that you will have each and every one of us to accomplish with the years that we have left here on the earth. And Father, I'm praying for a special grace for our eyes to be open, for our hearts to be soft and supple before you. And let us obey so that we can see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, so that we can have a mighty testimony of your goodness. Father, we thank you right now for dealing with our hearts. We thank you, God, for all the things that you're doing in our lives. Let this church and this ministry be known as a people who are so focused on the will and the purpose of God that they are building the kingdom of God in the earth. We are a strong people for you. You are our God, we are your people, and we will worship your name forevermore. Let every heart shout amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet tonight. And I just want to extend the invitation before we worship the Lord in giving tonight. I want to extend the invitation for those who are not in fellowship with Jesus Christ to receive him as your personal Savior. Everything that I was talking about tonight, about having true success, it only comes when we are in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he said, he's going to tell some people, depart from me. I never knew you. What he's saying is I wasn't in relationship with you. I wasn't close with you. I was knocking on the door of your heart. You didn't let me in. And somebody, God is knocking on the door of your heart right now. Just let him in. Just let him in. If you want to receive Jesus Christ, as your personal Savior. All you got to do is just pray this very simple prayer. Those who are watching online or those who are here in the physical building, just say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I need your grace. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me brand new. I make you Lord of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Now, friends, if, we, if you pray that very simple prayer tonight, we believe that you are saved and that you have begun this wonderful relationship with Jesus Christ Almighty. And we celebrate that tonight. But there's also another step that we want to encourage you to do. We, we want to encourage you to join and, or connect with a good Bible teaching church, a church that's going to teach you the Word of God, teach you His principles and standards, and help you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. And the church in Park Forest, Illinois, would love to have the opportunity to help you grow in your faith. It's the Word Worship Center. 
If you want to join our ministry and connect with us, simply log into our website at twwc.church. You can click on the connect with us button, fill out that card, and someone from our, our ministry will contact you this week and get you plugged into our ministry. God bless you. Anyone in here, you want to receive Jesus as your Savior, or you might simply want prayer, you could just come on up here to the front. We have a team of people who are equipped and ready to pray with you. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, let's clap our hands and give God praise tonight. And what we're going to do at this time, we're going to worship the Lord in giving, and then we're going to leave this place. There are several giving options that will be shown on the screen here. Uh, you can go ahead and give anyway. Most of us give via text to give. Unless you old school and you're writing checks, we accept checks too. You know the protocol. There's a deposit box in the back. You can uh, drop off your check in. Amen. We're going to allow a little time for you to uh, give your offering. Give unto the Lord. Bring an offering for the Lord. Amen. Just be led by the Holy Spirit. We bless the offering right now. Dean, will you pray over our offering? Father God, we just come before you tonight. We just thank you for honoring us and just giving us a great word on tonight. Thinking about success, we're giving our gifts, we're giving our seed, we're planting, Lord. So just have your way in someone's wallet tonight. Someone right now is saying, Lord, I don't have enough. But, Lord, just put it on their hearts to give 50 cents, $1. That is enough because it's not about the amount, God. It's all about you and the will that you have over their life. Obedience is the greatest sacrifice, God. So just bless us on tonight as we give unto the kingdom, God. We thank you for your glory and your power and all the honor that you give over us, God. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you as you give. Jesus, Lord. So much more, Jesus, more of you. Let's double time that. Say, I need more, 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 yeah. Jesus, more of you. Come on, sing it out. I, I need so much more, Jesus, more. Like we're done. Let's stand. See, I need more, more, more. Jesus, more of you. I need so much more. Jesus, more of you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have allowed to take place in this room. Thank you, Father, that we were able to feel your presence from the time we started with prayer, through praise and worship, through the word, and even through the offering. Thank you, God, for gracing us with your presence. Now, as we leave this place, but never your presence, I pray that you would bless every home represented and every person here allow us safe travel home in the mighty and matchless and wonderful name of Jesus. We thank you and we honor you. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. We'll see you either tomorrow or the next Saturday. First Saturday, rather.